Hi everyone, my name is Theodor Mitev and in this short lecture I will discuss how you should approach developing your digital artifact for subjects in the digital and social media major at the University of Wollongong. Uh, you can contact me at tedmitu on Twitter or through my website tedmitu.com. All right, so before we go into details, let's discuss quickly what is a digital artifact. And essentially, no matter what subjects uh, you're taking in the digital and social media major at the University of Wollongong, uh, the digital artifacts you'll be making have to follow three primary criteria. The first one, that the artifact is free form. You uh, design it, you develop it, you decide what its uh, creative parameters are. Uh, the second one, uh, you create and curate your digital artifacts online and in public from the very beginning. Uh, this means that the moment you conceptualize it and you start uh, prototyping and testing it, your artifact should already be online and in public in its very early uh, stage. And finally, uh, and probably most importantly, your digital artifact has to have a clear social utility. Uh, which means that it has to have uh, uh, relevance to an outside audience, to a user group which is not uh, in the class or in the university. It's uh, an actually existing group of users. All right, so let's discuss each one of these criteria in detail. First of all, when we talk about uh, free form, we also mean that uh, your digital artifact uh, can be individual or uh, a group project. And you decide the parameters of the group. This group can be uh, small, can be uh, a few people, or it can be a large group. Of course, keep in mind that uh, the larger the group, the more complex the group dynamics. So uh, we always advise students to think carefully about uh, their group projects and the people that they are collaborating with. Secondly, groups can collaborate across uh, tutorials. Uh, this means that if you are in a, a given subject, your group members can be uh, dispersed across a variety of tutorials in that subject. Uh, you can also collaborate with people across subjects at the same year. Uh, let's say you're a first year student or a second year student, you can collaborate with uh, other students uh, from other subjects in that year on a common digital artifact. You can also collaborate with students across years. Uh, so let's say you're a first year student, you're collaborating with someone uh, at third year level uh, on the same project. You can collaborate with uh, people across schools or across faculties or even with people outside of the university or from other countries. It has happened before and these kind of artifacts are always uh, exciting to uh, observe. All right, so how about online and in public? What does this stand for? First and foremost, uh, it stands for a format which uh, is much more uh, a series of media objects around a topic and much less a finished piece of something, a, a finished object which uh, appears online and stays there statically for others to uh, consume. So think of it as an open conversation which is online from the very beginning and to which you're continuously adding, hence a series of media objects around a topic. We always advise students that uh, the digital artifacts should be distributed around a number of platforms in order to maximize reach to potential users and also because uh, each and every additional uh, platform acts as an interface to the project. That being said, the more platforms, the more complex the project becomes. So the, you need to uh, keep this in mind when you're making that decision. Be careful when uh, adding additional platforms because this adds obviously uh, additional workload. Of course, it can be distributed across uh, a number of platforms and the choice of platforms will depend on the kind of audience you're trying to reach and obviously the parameters of the project that you have set. All right, so social utility, what does it stand for? Simply put, utility, uh, the way we understand it uh, when it comes to digital artifacts, stands for uh, something that is useful, meaningful, relevant to a given audience. How do you know whether your project is relevant to a given audience? You go and talk to that audience. You need to engage with a group of users 
in order to uh, discover what their needs are, what their patterns of behavior are, and what kind of content would be useful or relevant to them. Continuing on that topic, uh, to discover utility um, when it comes to your project, you need to first and foremost start by observing the audience. You might not have a clear idea what your audience is, that's fine at the very beginning, but you need to start narrowing that down. And this is a, you could imagine this is a collaborative process between yourself and the uh, users you're observing. Uh, once you've, you have a clear idea what kind of uh, uh, problem you want to tackle with regards to that audience and what kind of content you want to create, you should start prototyping content for the audience, test it with your users and observe the kind of feedback they give you. Feedback here is fundamental because without feedback, you cannot iterate and you cannot uh, proceed forward in developing a project. So in, in many respects, you're operating uh, as if it were in a vacuum outside of any meaningful interaction with an audience. So it's really important uh, when you're developing a digital artifact to continuously stay in touch with your users and to continuously reintegrate feedback from them uh, in your developmental process, uh, therefore iterating your project. All right, so now that we've discussed quickly the main parameters of uh, what a digital artifact is, uh, I want to spend some time uh, giving you uh, common pieces of advice that uh, are relevant to each and every project. And the first of which is this notion of if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. This is really important and really relevant to digital artifacts because many students make the mistake of starting in, in a very gray area without uh, thinking through uh, what their follow-up steps are. And uh, as an effect, uh, they fail because they, there is no trajectory to the project. Hence why we uh, demand students define a clear trajectory from the very beginning, from the moment you pitch your project uh, in your given subject. And uh, it's really important to have a clear plan forward when it comes to uh, the follow-up developmental steps that you're planning to undertake. Now, that being said, it's uh, also very important to keep in mind that uh, you need to be open to feedback and iteration. So what this means in practice is that uh, while you have a clear plan forward, let's say for the next six weeks, uh, in terms of what you want to be producing, you should be open to changing that plan based on feedback you've received from users or the absence of feedback, which is feedback in itself. As a corollary to that, uh, there is a, a second insight that uh, it's really important that all of you take on board, which is that if you are aiming your project at a largely undefined audience, usually this is framed by students as, you know, my, my project is aimed at everyone from 18 to 24, right? So if you're aiming at everybody in this sense, uh, you will not connect with anybody because you haven't done the legwork of defining correctly your audience and narrowing it down to um, an actually existing group of people with uh, common parameters, uh, with common interests, with common patterns of behavior. In order to work successfully on a digital artifact and uh, bring it to a satisfying completion within the parameters of a given subject, you need to first and foremost identify your users correctly, keep in touch with them continuously throughout the developmental process, uh, observe their interests, observe what their needs are, and uh, frame your content according to those. As a follow-up on that, the platform you select for your content should be informed by the platforms used by your audience. This also means that uh, you might start your project with a given platform and you might develop a certain amount of content for that platform, but you might discover midway through that your audience has migrated to other platforms or that actually uh, based on the interactions you've had with users, you need to iterate your project to other platforms, you need to be prepared for that eventuality that uh, you might have to migrate your content uh, midway through and continue uh, your project on another platform. Uh, the key moment here, the key insight is that you need to be where your audience is. Furthermore, as you are staying in touch with your audience and as you are 
uh, following a trajectory which you have planned beforehand, um, you should also be aware that it's really important that all aspects of your digital artifact, all aspects of the content you're producing, aggregating and curating for that specific audience needs to be aimed at uh, engaging with the target audience. Otherwise, you're losing an opportunity to engage. Otherwise, you're basically creating content in a vacuum. So what this means in practice is that you need to be very careful and very strategic about the kind of content you're creating. You should be either creating content to test new directions or to continuously engage on a direction that you've already established in terms of needs that your audience has. You shouldn't be creating content just because with no trajectory, with no plan uh, behind that. You should also consider engaging users across a variety of uh, platforms which operate as uh, online forums. These platforms are useful for um, finding interest-based um, users. So we always recommend uh, students to engage with Reddit and look for a specific uh, uh, type of uh, users which is relevant to their project uh, on uh, the variety of subreddits, the enormous variety of subreddits that exists. Uh, consider Discord as well, consider Facebook, obviously, uh, consider Twitch as a new and emergent platform which allows you to engage with users in a different way. What do we mean by engagement? First and, first and foremost, engagement is obviously uh, the generation of content, but it's not limited to that. It's also uh, engaging with user comments. So as, uh, as and when users comment under your content, you should always engage with those comments, always without exception. Uh, you should always comment back, thank them for their engagement and try and constructively build on what they're suggesting, even if this is critique. Give feedback to uh, comments, try and engage further in order to gauge feedback from uh, your users. Remember that feedback is uh, equals gold basically in this situation because absent feedback, you cannot iterate. Uh, observe your users as they engage with other content. Try and draw conclusions about your own content. Empathize with uh, the way uh, your users are operating. So try and position themselves, uh, yourself in, uh, in their shoes, as it were, metaphorically. Uh, this allows you to create better kind of content for them. Uh, always remember to identify specific uh, users who um, act as influencers within that area where you're operating. Target them. Um, specifically engage with them, uh, use them as influencers, that's their role. We also always recommend students to monetize their work. Monetization is another form of feedback. It uh, allows you also obviously to make money on the site apart from uh, studying. Uh, I've listed some uh, common popular monetizing platforms uh, on, online, Subscribestar, Patreon, TP, Etsy. Uh, Redbubble. These are not all by any means, uh, but uh, please consider seriously monetizing and uh, um, bringing your, your project to that uh, uh, additional level. This point that I'm making here sort of relates to another mini lecture that uh, I'm delivering on the concept of FIST, which stands for Fast, Inexpensive, Simple, Tiny. But when it comes to digital artifacts, it's really important to think in terms of uh, this methodology of fast, inexpensive, simple, and tiny. If you find yourself unable to uh, progress because you've reached a stumbling block, uh, very often this stumbling block is technological. It's uh, you know due to absence of knowledge. Consider finding out uh, what is it that you don't know and quickly um, patching up that knowledge through websites such as Udemy, where you can for, you know, basically pocket change, find tutorials on uh, almost any internet related topic. Also, if you identify that a task, uh, usually these are menial tasks, uh, which uh, are quite time consuming. So if you find that there is a task which is too time consuming and yet important in terms of your project development and in terms of your overall trajectory, consider outsourcing it through Fiverr. Uh, we welcome students doing that. Uh, of course, all of this needs to be documented and it goes into your uh, documentation for the final project. That's it from me on the topic of developing digital artifact. Uh, thank you for listening and uh, remember if you have any questions to reach out to me at TedMeToo uh, on Twitter or TedMeToo.com. Thank you and see you online.